Okay, we're on video on Monday, the 17th of February, 2020. Do hope you are doing well. So it's President's Day here in the US, so uh, the markets are shut, everything's a little bit quiet. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different in this video. I upgraded to the latest version of the Apple MacBook Pro, the 16-inch version, three weeks ago. So I thought I'd just do a quick video on my impressions on using that machine and just using TradeStation on a Mac in general. So if you're thinking about upgrading uh, to this uh, new version of the MacBook Pro, um, here are some initial thoughts. First of all, just running TradeStation on an Apple Mac. So TradeStation normally is a Windows-based uh, app and using it conventionally on an Apple Mac does not work. You have to use the Parallels virtual operating system to run Windows on your Mac and then you load TradeStation onto the Parallels operating system. And it works great. I've been doing this for, I think, since 2010 was when I finally ditched my last Dell computer. And it's been kind of pretty seamless. The reason I do this is because I really like the Apple hardware. I don't like necessarily the Apple software. And in fact, I don't use any Apple uh, apps that I can think of. I pretty much use Google apps for everything, you know, calendar, Gmail, Drive, uh, you name it, everything that I can, I'm kind of using uh, Google apps. But running TradeStation on an Apple Mac is actually a really good solution, works extremely well. A couple of years ago, when they moved to the Retina screen format on uh, MacBook Pros, there were some glitches and some pr problems because uh, the TradeStation app doesn't really deal with high def graphics very well. But there are some workarounds and you can kind of make it look pretty good. And I'll talk about just later uh, in this video about the settings that I use for that. So uh, the new 16 inch MacBook Pro comes out. I'm kind of excited because uh, I'm always looking for a decent size screen because I'm traveling, I have to use a laptop and moving up from a 15 inch screen to a 16 inch screen is just too uh, big of an opportunity to miss up. So I've upgraded, and this are the specs of the machine I've gone for. I usually go for pretty high spec machines, and this machine was no different. So I went for a 2.3 gigahertz. It's an eight core i9 processor. Uh, I could have upgraded to the 2.4 gigahertz uh, processor, but I chose to go with the 2.3. Maxed out in terms of RAM, because in past I've found that to be a uh, limiting factor uh, running TradeStation quickly on a Mac. So maxed out the RAM to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is fantastic. They've got that option now. And the graphics card is an eight gigabyte graphics card instead of the four gigabyte version. And then in terms of storage, uh, minimum amount of storage, which is actually the one terabyte storage on this machine is the lowest spec that you can choose. Uh, it goes up to eight uh, terabytes. I don't even use a fraction of the one terabytes because I'm using Google Drive. Everything is off in the cloud. I actually measured it and I'm only using 60 gigabytes of my uh, storage on this machine, which is roughly 6% of the available storage. So um, in terms of storage, that is not a, an important fact for me. But the 64 gigabytes of RAM uh, was an important factor and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to this machine. So those are the specs of the machine I chose and after three weeks of use, this is kind of the pros and cons as I see it. Remember I'm upgrading from a machine that's about 18 months old. It was a mid-2018 MacBook Pro. It was the 15-inch version. We've moved up to a 16-inch version and the first pro of using this machine is that larger screen. Uh, it's nice having a little bit Bit more kind of real estate to work with with your charts. The screen quality is excellent. Uh, the images uh, are really sharp. The colors are bright. The contrast is great. And I'm just going to show you that on an example chart here on TradeStation. So here's a 1500 tip bar chart of the E-mini at ES. I know I'm recording this on a video. It is a high def kind of video recording. Uh, but from what I can see on my screen here is the colors are really vibrant. Uh, the little ticks are really clear. 
uh, and it's just a very nice kind of uh, screen image. So that's the first benefit is uh, this kind of larger screen. And actually having the smaller bezels on the side, you know, you think, oh, it's kind of a minor thing, but it is actually nice. It feels like the screen is kind of maxed out in terms of the surface uh, that you got to kind of play with. So that's a definite pro. The second one in terms of speed, you know, so I'm moving up from a machine about 18 months old. It feels about 10% uh, quicker doing tasks. It's definitely quicker opening charts, which is nice. I haven't maxed out the number of charts that I've opened at any one time, um, but I can easily cope with a dozen or 16 probably charts open at any one time, but I've not tested what the max is on this particular machine, but it's no limitations there, I feel as if it is it is a nicer thing. But it's only about 10% faster. If you, I mean, I've seen a lot of reviews of this machine and people are talking about, wow, it's a monster, it's a beast, it runs everything quicker. It's like, yeah, I think you'll notice on your applications that it is faster, but um, it only feels about 10% faster, that's all I want to say. And then lastly, the keyboard is nice. They've got rid of this uh, kind of the old style of keyboard, which had very little travel. And I was, this is main, the main reason that I moved up to this machine, because I was starting to have problems with that keyboard. It was the old butterfly switch uh, system, and I was starting to get problems with repeated keys and so on. And my wife's had problems on her MacBook Pro and required an entire new keyboard to be put in. I just didn't want to go through the hassle of doing that, so I decided to just ditch that machine and then uh, replace it with this one, which has a nicer, quieter keyboard, and hopefully it'll be uh, you know, uh, good for the long term. So that's it in terms of kind of pros of this machine. In terms of cons of the machine, not many, and they're really kind of minor little things. There's a little bit more fan noise when I'm doing kind of uh, high computation things. So rendering video, uh, the fan will kind of kick in noticeably more uh, than the old machine. But to be honest, that is such a minor point. It's really just you know, a note rather than a con. The trackpad, I'm actually having problems with the sensitivity of it when I'm using command plus a click or shift plus a click. So if I'm opening a new window and I'm using those kind of commands together, using the trackpad normally, the sensitivity, I set it on high and it's working no problems at all. But when I just happen to use it with command or shift plus the click, I'm having to like tap it three times and I have to tap right in the middle of the trackpad. So I'm not sure if anybody else is having those same kind of issues, but that's a bit of a pain in the neck for me. So that's uh, kind of, I'm surprised that is a little bit of a problem. Maybe they'll get some complaints and fix it with a software uh, and operating system kind of update. Then the lastly to say you know, the setup still takes hours to do. Uh, it still takes me a good four to six hours to transfer everything across from my old machine to my new machine. And that's me using Google Drive, which is in the cloud. So I've got nothing in terms of storage on the machine itself. And it still takes a good long while to do that, which leads me to a point that if I were to spec out an ideal machine, it would be a Chromebook with a 16-inch screen, and I would, trade, uh, I would run TradeStation in the cloud on a virtual machine. I've done that from time to time uh, just as a testing thing when we've had poor internet connections or when I was replacing a machine uh, kind of previously. And it's not a bad solution. There is a little bit of lag between you moving your cursor on your machine and seeing it in a virtual machine on your screen. But that is a setup that I'd really like to use in the future. So if we ever get a really nice high def Chromebook 16 inch or 17 inch screen, uh, that might be something that I would kind of consider in the future. And the reason is, when you open your Chromebook or log into a Chromebook or move to a new Chromebook, it's you can be literally up and running with your settings and your apps in minutes. It's extraordinary. Uh, and I do have the latest Pixelbook Go, which I love for like media consumption and just doing a little bit of kind of text editing and so on. So that's, uh, you know, at some point, you know, this is a good setup right now, TradeStation through Parallels on a Mac. I really like it. Uh, but it's, if some point in the future, you know, this kind of ideal Chromebook kind of comes along, i would probably move to that. Just a little point to do with the purchase decision this time around, something that Apple have added and made really easy, which I thought was excellent and I would probably recommend, is the trade-in service that they have. So now you can trade in your old machine for the new machine. You purchase the new machine, the new machine is FedExed or whatever to you, you're given a couple of days to transfer to your new machine, and then you send back the trade-in machine to Apple. 
And just so you know, this was roughly the numbers in US dollars. For the new 16-inch machine, I was paying 3700 bucks. The trade-in that they gave me on the 15-inch machine, which is 18 months old, that was almost $1,500, which I think, in my mind, is is pretty damn good. Uh, the, I could have got more, maybe, if I'd sold it on eBay, but the hassle of doing that is just not worth it. Um, so this kind of trade-in service is a, a, a real benefit, which gives me a net price of about $2,200, which works out to, if you ha- I have the machine for about 18 months, about $4 today. I mean, everybody talks about you know apples as being expensive, but when you look at it on a, a daily use kind of basis really it's it's uh, it's fairly trivial uh, just a last note with this trade-in I've not received the money back quite yet uh, and in the uh, email I got from Apple it says part of the refund may be issued on an Apple store gift card so I shall wait to see how much of that uh, $1,500 ends up being a gift card kind of amount rather than just a charge back on the uh, credit card Anyway, uh, so this is possibly the most important thing when you're moving uh, to using TradeStation on a Mac. This whole deal with the Retina screen on a Mac and the limitation that TradeStation has in their graphics not being high def, how to run that with uh, you know so it's compatible uh, between the two. And these are the settings that I've found kind of work best for me. If you have some other settings that you know uh, work well or better, uh, please let me know because I'd uh, be interested in kind of testing those out. The two settings that you need to use in Parallels, so Parallels is this kind of meta operating system uh, that's sitting on top of the Mac operating system to run Windows. You set it to, first of all, coherence mode. I'm actually running coherence at the moment, so this setting says exit coherence, but this one, if you're not running coherence, it'll say enter coherence. So that's coherence, which means that the Windows in uh, the Windows operating system look like Mac kind of uh, app windows. So that's the first setting. And then when you go to the retina resolution, just choosing scaled is the setting that I find uh, to work best. So those are the two things you need to do within parallels. And then the windows within Windows 10 in the display settings, this is what I'm using. I'm using 100% screen uh, size resolution is the recommended one set at 1792 by 1120 pixels. So with those two kind of changes in parallels and in Windows 10, I've found that the uh, screen resolution that you can see in TradeStation, which looks kind of like that, uh, is kind of optimum for my needs. So there we go, Um, a little bit of a run through of the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. I think it's a great machine, had no problems kind of so far. I'm kind of glad to be off uh, the uh, old machine, the 15 inch machine, because I was starting to have problems with the keyboard and that was just gonna get worse and worse, I could see over time. So I'm glad to be using a new machine and that extra screen space, definitely uh, worth having. So I recommend kind of upgrading if you're thinking about doing it. So looking forward to uh, Tuesday and trade resuming and getting back to some e-mini day trading.